All right, we're getting close here to actually putting a tractor together, but there's a couple little things I need to get done first. What this video is going to be about is I am going to install our clutch components into the torque tube and also install the clutch on the back of the flywheel. This one will probably be a fairly short video, but we're sort of staging things here to put this thing back together. Give you a quick walk around. Got the engine. The radiator actually come off of it before I put it together. I don't want to deal with that in the way, but a couple days ago I put the front end together. I didn't catch that on video, but it's pretty straightforward. Got torque tubes ready, transmission's ready, PTO's ready. Final drives are ready. I do have to put brakes in that one still, but that won't stop us from getting the large assembly together. Although I got a couple weeks, I'm sure I'll get it done. Here it is. Everything else we're waiting on is on the ceiling or anywhere. I cleaned up the torque tube, painted it um, inside and out for the most part. The sleeve here that the throwout bearing slides on is in really good shape. So luckily I didn't have to mess with that. There's a couple of modifications I had to make. So normally, let's see the way this mounts. This pin goes through the side. Steve, we can see it here. I don't know how clean it is. Yeah, there's paint in there, but normally this pin goes through the side goes through here. That wasn't in too bad a shape. What was in bad shape it was in bad shape. If you look at this fork, this hole was elongated and getting close to the edge. And this pin that goes through it had a big notch worn in it halfway through. So what I ended up doing is filling that notch a weld and then machining it on the lathe and polishing it up and had another notch over here, but we took care of that. And so all that force would not wear this any further. I took a steel sleeve in here and welded it in place. So now this entire surface is the bearing surface for this pin and not just the two edges. Now there's a couple things I had to change because of that. Because normally, this sat here, and you had a pin here and a pin here to keep it from sliding back and forth. Well, I can't get to that inside pin, obviously. So I put a spacer here, and I'll just have a pin on the outside, and that should hold it in place. But this is the pin where the linkage from the clutch pedal mounts, and we'll actually push this arm to pivot. So that's different than factory, but it's pretty much not going to really change the procedure of installing this very much, but it's going to go here. Another thing I did was clean up our slide here, the throw out bearing or, or release bearing mounts too. Place the grease fitting. Now this release bearing, I'll actually press on to this. So I usually tap on pretty easy. Set this on a flat surface, tap it with a mallet, and it pops right into place. All right, let's get started. All right, it's so first step. We'll install this release bearing. Set this here so I can do it on camera easier. So we're fully seated. Should be good to go.
There's just a cavity inside of here that I wanted to be sure to coat well. Also, some on here, just a thin coat. Yeah, really thin coat on the inside, just to keep it from rusting. All right. Okay, pretty important. This technically could go in either way, except you would not be able to access this grease fitting this inspection hole in the bottom so you want to make sure that points down let's excess grease out of here slides pretty good Okay, we will take that back out to put the fork in. Let's go ahead and lube this part up. Okay. We'll definitely use the smally grease for this. Grease is good for pivot points and for splines. You got a spline shaft going into something. All right. Wipe off a little of the excess from the outside. Good coat here. Now, determining which side I want to put that through, I need to determine which side I want up on this. So, looking at this, I can see this whole this pivot pin goes in. It's wearing towards this side. Let's see if that can show up better here. Well, like, yeah, it's not showing up very good, but. You can see it's slightly offset. It's wearing towards this side. This side is unworn. So I want to set it <clears throat> to where when the fork is being pressed, it's pressed this direction. So it puts tension on the new side that's not been worn. And that's not bad wear for 70 mm -hmm. years, even though most of that was just sitting. But Okay, so we're going to want it to mount this way. That side up. Would you believe that went all the way down there to the bottom? Now I'm going to have to lean this thing over to grab it. No, actually, I looked out. I can grab it with a magnet. There's a hole on the side, so I got it with a magnet screwdriver. Okay, so it's going to mount this way. And the pedal's on that side, so that is where I will go with this because here's the hole right through here where the linkage comes through for the clutch and we'll just put a tad of grease on there the washer maybe a tad more just And a quarter pin. So there it is. I forgot to bring over a pair of pliers to bend this, so give me a second. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. Now, just to show you how this is set up, 
this rod, which I'm not going to install yet, is the rod for the clutch. Still need to do a little work on it. It was worn pretty bad here, almost halfway through, and I still needs a little bit of work. This clutch rod. We'll thread into here. And that pi pivots the fork. So that's kind of how that works. I'll also show you how that is when it's installed. So now, the fork going to mount here. So that's another place I want to put some of the molly lube. This pivot pin slides through. I don't think it matters which side it slides from. And this little groove is actually going to be between the fork and the housing. And this clip goes in between. And the fork and housing will actually stop it from sliding. Let's see if this matters. Okay, so I'm looking at this now. And with this straight, I see I don't have much gap on this side. But I have more gap on that side. So this is going to be the side the pin goes in from. So that would be the right side right under the starter. So it reminded me I need to get a little bit of lube on here where it'll be rubbing the housing. Hey. Okay. Now I have not put lube on this part in pur on purpose because I don't want to put lube through that hole. But I'll, when I get it close, I'll lube it up. All right, so now when I tap it through, that lubricated section of that pen should go to the right spot. I don't know if you can see it, but I stopped right where that clip is. All right, that clip fit pretty tight, so... Still good spring left in and I'll go with it instead of replacing it. All right. That's about it. Show you how this is normally set up. This rod will go through here, right on this corner here. And when you press the clutch, you press it in. Go ahead and remove this clutch rod. I got to work on it later.
All right, now on to the clutch. Since I took so long to edit this video, all this assembly was a couple weeks ago. I can show you here at the end of this one the clutch rod installation. All right, so we have the rod mounted. Pedal assembly is mounted. I do not have a spring on here yet. But it all works. So, clutch released, clutch depressed. All right. Ready to go in the tractor. It took a while to get to this point. I messed up and ordered the wrong clutch. This takes an eight and a half inch clutch, and I ordered a nine inch clutch. And it's because I was ordering based on price, and a nine inch was a lot cheaper because it fits more models. Um, but anyway, we got the right setup now. Got our clutch disc. And pressure plate. I already packed this cavity with grease for the bearing, for the pilot bearing. Um, something I did a little different. That originally had a wick that would draw oil that would splash onto it through the crankshaft into that bearing to lubricate it. Um, I plugged off that hole in the crankshaft. And I just packed the cavity with good grease. Uh, this is kind of how it's been done for years in the automotive world. And it lasts 100,000 100, miles plus. This, this thing's not going to get driven too much. So we're going with that grease, hopefully, to take care of it. I'm not sure how good the wicks are over time anyway. They seem to build up and plug up. So we're going to try it without it. Um <clears throat> One thing this clutch did not come with was a tool to center it. To give you an idea, it would look something like this, except this is for the clutch that I ordered by mistake. And it would go through the clutch disc and engage the pilot and hold it in place. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the next best thing, and we're going to use the shaft that normally sits there. I do have a universal clutch alignment tool, but... I can't find it at the moment. The way this clutch disc goes on, if you put it on this way, our springs are going to actually hit here. So the part of the clutch disc that protrudes, this side faces outwards. Slide this over the shaft. Slide it there, and it should be perfectly centered. Now, what you don't see is on the other end of the shaft, I have a rig set up, shimmed up to be the exact same height, so it's straight all the way across, holding the shaft up. So next up, slide a pressure plate over this. Just realized I forgot to chase the threads on this flywheel. Let's see if it gives me any issues. I think the issues I'm having now is just these holes lining up. It's not quite a precise fit. Something else to note here. I put the shaft in first just kind of as a visual representation so you saw what was going on. You don't have to. You can get all this started first, get the bolt started, then align it before you tighten it down. Yeah, this bolt hole is just a little bit off. But 
they're all started. Okay, now it's getting close. Start the shaft. All right, start to tighten down now. Notice these fingers pull in as we tighten it down. All right, now we slide this transmission all together. Should go in pretty easy. Okay, so let me use my let me use my flywheel holder here. All right, so that's our clutch install for now. Um, there's one adjustment we'll have to possibly make once we get it installed. There is a spec for the gap between the throwout bearing and these three fingers. And you adjust the screw to change that gap. And I think it was an eighth of an inch, something like that. I'm not sure. We'll look it up when we get it together. But uh, you can't do that until it's installed. You get everything in place. Then you adjust this to change that gap. Other than that, clutch is done. Throw out bearing and forks installed. Our next step. Well, I got a few steps I got to catch up on, but little stuff. But after this one, the next video is going to be putting the tractor together. All these major assemblies together anyway. And then if I get it to that point, we'll fire it off for the first time in that same video. We'll see how it goes.